This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. More than healthcare coverage, it's a better experience. Visit FBHP.com to learn more. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. This Saturday night, the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame will induct a new class, the class of 2023. And our own Keith Bullock will be inducted. He joins us on the OTP. What about the Hall of Famer? I know, right? I like I can't I feel like I can't even look him in the eye anymore. Like <laughs> too big time. No, but I mean really truly it, it's something that I know you have seen other people going into the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. What is in my brain is when Javon Curse was told you were at his kind of celebration when he found out um, and that was such a cool thing. But now for it to be you, does it kind of feel like it's about time? Um, not, you know what? Not necessarily. Um, you know, I was, when I got to college, like my co Paul Pasqualoni, our head coach was always like, you know, um, with team success comes individual honors. And I know I played really hard here. Um, like Javon, Eddie, Steve, like all the guys, um, but we never really, to me, like I never really accomplished maybe two goals that I had. And, you know, one was to win defensive MVP and two was to win a Super Bowl. But that being said, um, you know, I got to play behind Albert Hainsworth, who was a runner up or within the top three of defensive MVP. I played on some teams that had Super Bowl capability, but for whatever reason, you know, we just didn't get over the hump. So when it comes to me, I guess I think, you know, it it's it's an honor because, you know, I kind of look at my career um, like art. You know, you go out there, you practice, you prepare for those moments. Like I never got to play in the Super Bowl, but I was prepared for all the days that I went out there and practiced and then that I put into my craft. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cool when people recognize um, – you know what you did and now you know i was drafted in 2000 and it's 2023 and to really think back that i've been retired on like a little over 10 years and to put some perspective on it you know i was playing a a game and um half your life ago yeah (laughs) and it it was fun and like my purpose was to, to win and like um i really you know bought into you know the you know the foundation that the team that I got to play with um, as a rookie who were an inch of, you know, going on to overtime for the Super Bowl. So there was a, a mind state. There was a, um, a, a way to go about things that I learned. Just like when I got to college, there was a way to go about it. So it was fun. The whole process was fun. And, you know, uh, all the guys that I've ever got to play with um, helped me become a Hall of Famer in the sense that, um, you know, I took things from their game or, you know, if there's a guy that I know we're going to need and I had to get on him a little bit and like push him and be show leadership in times when I didn't want to be a leader because, you know, um, for me, it was all about winning. You know, I know um, that I'm going to do my job. And sometimes as a leader, you know, you have to bring guys with you. And that's, you know, everything that went into the game. um, I definitely enjoyed it. It was cool. So my question is actually for Keith, and uh, so I've got an event coming up in July, July 22nd, where we're going to uh, celebrate a new class of inductees for the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, and I'm just wondering if you're free on July 22nd. Oh, what? <laughs> I think the hall is calling. Oh, wow. So talk to me about, now that you've had time to absorb all of it, the night you were told at Nissan Stadium, Brad Willis shows up out of nowhere. You're speaking with Rand Carthon. You think you're there for just a, an event. As as you go back through that, you seemed very shocked. I was. Were you? Okay. I was. Because, um, you know, you, we did our normal thing. Sure. The last 10, 11 years, yeah. you, you've been my teammate. Amy's been my <laughs> teammate. So it's like, KB, hey, we... We're inter- doing um was a fan um, recognition, right, introducing for, uh-huh, Rand. Yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, of course. Like I said, if I'm in town, I'm down. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, just, 
you know, regular and Brad to me, like he's a, he wears a mini hat. Sure. You know, so there's no telling what maybe he's trying to get like a raffle going. I don't even know. <laughs> a raffle. And then he's asking me, what am I doing um, July 22nd? I'm like in my head. I'm like, oh, me and my brothers, we're supposed to be going to we're probably be in Portugal. And then he's wow. like, and he's like, um, well, and then he hit the question. I was like, yeah, of course. I mean. Portugal ain't going nowhere, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can go there. We'll make that up. We'll make that time up. So I was definitely um, taken back, especially, you know, like I was just explaining, like I'm a decade removed. Like I watch the game from afar through a different lens and I'm, you know, privileged to do that kind of like your lens. You sure. see it differently than the fan, as do you. Um, so, you know, I'm not really thinking about any more honors from football. So um, especially here, um, it's great um, that I'm inducted here in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame because, um, you know, this is where I lived half my life. Sure. You know, I got here at 22 and, you know, to be recognized as during that era of the 2000s is one of the better, you know, athletes, football players, in Tennessee, that's pretty cool. Your daughters did not get to see your career because they weren't here. Right now, nah, we were but, focused. I was uh, focused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does this moment mean to them? Um, you know what? I don't. I don't know if I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's funny because uh, when my wife told them, they were like, "Isn't Daddy already in the Hall of Fame or something <laughs> like that?" Like, um, but that, I was inducted in my high school in Rockland County and all those things where I'm from. Um, but yeah, it, it's just interesting. So they never saw me play. Kira, my oldest, knew of me playing because she was about two or three when I retired. Um, and then the other two come. Um, so their ages are 15, 10, and 13. Um, yeah, they just see me as dad. They know what I did, but I don't. I think this will be a great introduction to like, oh, okay, my dad is. You know, it's just. I remember I don't. Need, I don't even take them to games. I remember the first Titans game I took them to. Um, my two oldest, they were probably like nine and seven. You know, I'm gonna have football daughters. You know, <laughs> they. I got them on the field before the game. They're picking the grass. <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> they're like off to the side. They're not throwing a football or nothing there picking the grass it's like they never seen grass that soft i was like yeah uh, <laughs> it sounds familiar you so know, it's gonna it's be cool it's gonna be cool to see th that's gonna be a cool night for us as a family you know because my wife is, was around the whole time we were dating we we're together but we weren't married um so you know you know when she, i wonder you know even for her to even look back and you know sitting through that Jets game in Monday Night Football. <laughs> Remember that? It was, uh, I don't know how cold it was. But cold. She, she got frostbite. Oh. She's from San Francisco, so she, you know, she's not up on weather. She had just moved to New York. Mm -hmm. so. oh. yeah, it wasn't great. But that is a cool thing to be able to reflect on with your family, reflect on with your daughters, but also really take a moment to really appreciate what it is that you accomplished in your career. Because I'm sure that, Yes, you've been out of it for a decade. You have done an incredible amount of stuff from a business perspective. and You're a busy dude. Like, you've <laughs> got stuff going on. Um, but to be able to take some time to really reflect on that, being a little bit further removed than right when you decide to retire and so there's all those emotions and feelings, now that you're kind of out of that, are you excited to be able to kind of look back on your career and say, all right, I did actually do some things? Yeah, I mean, I think um, as a former player, we all reflect. I think we reflect more often than we, we lead on, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, part of my reflection as a, as a Titan is, um, you know, you look at our running backs, right? Um, Earl Campbell set the tone. Then you had Eddie George. Then you had Chris Johnson. Then you have Derrick Henry. And you had some good guys in between, but those are our, our pillars. And The fabulous know, four. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And to, I say that to say, you know, right now, at, and, and they're all great. Pick which one you want, you know what I mean? At, right now, you know, at my position, you know, there aren't too many. There are a lot that I look back and I like that played here and that gave it all, but I feel that – you know, like Eddie did and Earl Campbell did and CJ did and Derek is doing, I feel like I set the tone 
for what it is to be a linebacker for the Tennessee Titans. Titans fans, listen up. Open a Titans checking account from Pinnacle with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August the 18th, and you could win two tickets to five Titans home games. Details at titansbanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Member FDIC. I've just been handed breaking news, Titans fans. It's official. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of your Tennessee Titans. That's right. The deal is finalized. SeatGeek is the newest member of your Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, SeatGeek, you'll be hearing it a lot more this season and for seasons to come. That's SeatGeek. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of your Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. What are you most proud of in your career? Um, I'm most proud of that when two things. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, one is that my last full, my last complete game as a Titan, I was AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Um, the next week I got hurt. Um, we started that season 0-6, but we were trending to sneak in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really believe if I didn't get hurt, we would have beat um, San Diego on Monday night or something. It was a night Christmas game. Christmas night. It was a night Ooh. game, so you know I was going to show up. <laughs> 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 no, I really believe. We missed you that night for sure. I yeah. mean, it, it, it showed in the ball game because we talked about it on the broadcast. Yeah, like um, I really believe that, you know, you know, and it, it kind of made me realize, you know, you know what I meant to the team. Mm-hmm. So I th- – and to follow – I follow that up with is – I'm really proud that I left it the way those guys set it up. You know, like the way that team, you know, the, you know, the Steves and the Eddies and the, you know, Blaine Bishops, the Marcus Robinsons, the Jason Fisks, like, you know, uh, Derek Masons, you know, Kevin Dysons, you know, just all those guys, the 99 to 2000, um, that team 2001 and then i became a starter like i knew how to do it i knew what it was how it was supposed to be done you know we look back now it might be done a little different and that's good because organizations are supposed to evolve and change you know you have to go through your periods and that's fine but for me i'm most proud that i left it like how you know those guys kind of left it when i left how much do you keep in touch with guys you played with um, I, I think a lot. I think I, I think we do a, a fairly good job. I think um, um, Miss Amy has done a great job of with the alumni weekend and which allows, um, you know, people now obviously with the Oilers organization, but with guys I played with, with the Titans, um, you always have those guys that, you know, you might have hung out with and they were only here for this time of the year, you know, through OTAs up to camp and then they get cut at camp, but they're still good people, you know, through football, obviously we're all out here competing. It's a job, it's a game, but there's a personal side. We're we're people more than we are athletes. And, um, you know, those people that you connect with and click with, uh, you usually stay in touch with. And I think that it's great um, living back here in Nashville and, being able to, you know, even if I can't make every event for an alumni weekend, you know, I'm sure to get to one and then you reconnect with somebody. Yo, let me get your number. You're into this. Oh, what are you doing now? You might be in the same business or you got kids that are playing volleyball or, oh, I'm here for all that. So it's pretty cool um, in this uh, phase of life to reconnect with those guys. And, um, you know, mental health is like huge. You know, there's there are guys that are still stuck, like thinking that they're number 26 for the Tennessee Titans or the New York or whoever sure. it was, you know what I mean? And I think those opportunities um, coming together, you know, help for that as well. Amy Adams Strunk has done so many things and has helped reconnect. I mean, the Oilers players to the Titans yeah. players and 
the Oilers players to the Oilers players and the Titans players to the Titans players. It's one of the best things she's done. And then she's connected to guys in different ways. Amy Adams Strunk and Chris Johnson. Yeah. I mean, they <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you know, um, like I think for me, you know, the only other team that I got the opportunity to play with was the New York Giants. Sure. You know, one of the original, you know, franchises of football, you know, um, and – just to see how Mr. Mara and the ownership was there. I had never seen anything like that. You know, um, you know, I appreciated playing here and going out for the guys and the coaches and for the people I played for, you know, the city. But, um, you know, just to really observe Mr. Mara at practice every day, talking to the GM, and I'm like, okay, like I saw the business side of it, and I didn't get to see that. And, you know, once a giant, always a giant. Like I remember, um, you know, they just got Odell Beckham Jr. and I played for the Giants and once upon a time for what, a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was there for a season, but um, I reached out. My little nephew wanted to go to practice. Yeah, come on through. And they treated me and I was like really impressed by that. And I think that, uh, and I know that um, Miss Amy is, that's, she's trending, she's doing that. Like she does that, you know, as a former player, you know, there was a time obviously um, when Mr. Adams died and ownership was in limbo where it wasn't welcoming at all to come around or, you know, feel as a part of the organization. And I think that, you know, while I know for a fact that that is part of um, Miss Amy's goal and more importantly, for those old time guys that were in Houston that probably felt they got left behind for a couple of decades, her rolling out the red carpet for them and, you know, us as those younger players that they got to watch and they might have, you know, liked and never met, um, you know, letting them feel, look, this is your city too, you know, here's my number. Anytime you're in town, come get a cup of coffee. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so nice. It's been so fun to see as someone who has – now been with this organization for a while, who's seen players of kind of different eras be able to come together and bond a little bit and share those stories. Because at the end of the day, playing in the National Football League, playing for the Tennessee Titans is a very elite fraternity. And so to be a part of someone who played in the NFL, who played for the Tennessee Titans, and is now being recognized for your contributions in something like the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. That's like elite of elite when it comes to fraternities. And there are some pretty incredible Titans names in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. Mike Keith. Um, <laughs> Amy Adams Strunk. I mean, there's tons of like real. Well, but you I think mean, Titans Eddie people. and Steve and Javon and Keith and Frank. And I mean, it's a. I mean, you guys were the building blocks. You were the pillars as we get ready to move into the new stadium. It was the foundation you laid that takes us there. And, you know, the fan base has been tremendous. But, I mean, those days and, you know, those teams, um, those were magic Sundays. And I, I think we have a lot more to come, which is really fun. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you, you, you speak about those players, those men. Um, uh, I Unfortunately, Unfortunately, they didn't get to play here as long as I did uh, for a 10-year career with the Tennessee Titans, you know, um, get to play in front of these home fans. But they set the tone. They set the foundation with that first season in Adelphia Stadium, in the Coliseum. Um, that's what it was called. It was the yeah, Adelphia Coliseum? The Adelphia Coliseum. And um, just um, – that set the tone for my career, you know, um, that set the tone for my career. I remember the next year we had a, a losing season and, um, you know, I just remember the last game of the season. I think we played the Bengals. And we did, because that was the game that was postponed due to 9-11. Yeah, and it was just a game that it was like, oh, it was rainy. It was, I remember, like, and we lost. And I just remember the fans, like, the ones that stayed and came, like, clapping giving mm -hmm. us like a mm -hmm. like and we lost and like since then like that's what it's all about and like you know uh, i played for three things you know i played you know for my family the fans and my teammates you know what i'm saying um so you know that's when the fan it used to be myself but that's when you know you're realizing 
you're playing a professional game, you're making money, you got fans that depend on you for their Sundays, especially in a town, uh, now big city like Nashville, where people are spending money on a ticket on Sunday, you know, you know, <laughs> they're giving something up that they could be doing in their life. Hey, Titans fans. It's hard to decide what's the best part of a Dunkin' run. Is it the coffee or the classic $1 donut, the $2 stuffed bagel minis, or the $3 sausage, egg, and cheese that you can add to that coffee? Or, of course, you just get to leave the office. The answer, of course, is yes. Time for a Dunkin' run. Great deals on food for $1, 2 or $3 with a medium or larger coffee. America runs on Dunkin'. Keith Bullock is our guest on the OTP. We are talking about the fact that this Saturday night, he is part of the 2023 class of the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. The dinner is sponsored by the Tennessee Titans, and it's going to be another fantastic event. Best player you ever played with? Can you name one? Yeah, just honestly, off the top of my head, I was uh, Chris Johnson. And I say that because I had been playing and there are people before that, you know, I could put in there um, for sure. But I say Chris Johnson because um, at that time we were playing a style of football, a tough defense, run the football, slug it out. We were just tough. We we're a tough club. We weren't, you know, we might beat you, we might not. <laughs> it was like that like season. We got a little electrifying because we got Vince Young, Lindell, Pac Man, that you know, but mm -hmm. Chris Johnson, um, he was the first guy in a long time that I was like, whoa, you know, um, when you when when he gets his space and he did his thing, um, it, he was very fun to watch. He was a uh, a great teammate um, to play with in that sense that um, as a defensive player, as a linebacker, it's like okay. I'm, you can't let anybody, another running back, play better than Chris on Sundays mm -hmm. because he's the only running back that should shine. We got the best running back in the league, and I already know that it's hard to get you know some notoriety. So for me, um, defensively, it was one of my missions, and it had always been um, whoever we're playing against uh, to shut uh, shut them down. And my matchup was typically a running back tight end, but when Chris Johnson got here, I took it a little more personal. And um, it was just fun. It was fun. I saw I just off the top of my head. Good answer. You've got the Mr. Monday Night name just locked up. You will be Mr. Monday Night <laughs> yeah, for all funny. time. Um, what was it about those primetime games, those big moments that really made Keith Bullock shine? Um, so, I mean, it's just with the opportunities we got to play on television. You know, we didn't get to play on television too much. So if... If you watch the Titans every Sunday, I'm shining just about every Sunday, you know. But then when you get on television, um, for me, it was easy. Like, I, I, I like those moments. One of my favorite players is Ocho Cinco just because, you know, he talks the talk and you walk the walk. And he walked the walk mm -hmm. for the most part. And, like, that's kind of just how I felt about myself. And then you're playing primetime. They're putting all these cameras in your face. Half the reporters don't even know who you are, like don't know your career. So, you know, I'm not backing down from a challenge. And, you know, sometimes your teams need to hear that from their leaders. You know what I'm saying? Certain things of confidence that it's like, you know, um, I remember when Lance Schulters was here and we were playing the um, AFC Championship <laughs> against the Raiders. And he tells Jimmy why he's like, Jerry Rice, he's a crybaby. He's always crying. He's calling w Jerry Rice a crybaby. Yes. <laughs> Before the AFC championship game, if you don't think this is bullet board material, and then Jimmy <laughs> comes to me, he's like, yeah, hey, Keith, um, Lance says, you know, Jerry Rice is a crybaby. Have you known Jerry Rice to be a cry? I'm like, I have Lance said it, he said it. You know, it just is what it is. Have you know you what I'm known saying? So, Jerry Rice to yeah, be a it's just baby. only the greatest receiver of all time. That's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's okay. So, yeah, just, um, just fun times. When you think about all of it and you could think about different moments in different games, wasn't it just fun? 
Yeah. It was it was fun. People ask me all the time. <laughs> they come into my shop. I'm ringing them up. I'm making them a latte. <laughs> They're asking me stuff about what's going on with the Titans. I'm like, sir, my 6 o'clock called out. I had to get here. I ain't even thinking about the Titans. <laughs> but then we get into conversations like, yeah, I, do I miss it? They are, That's the famous question. Do you miss it? It's like, no, I did it. Like, I literally did it. Like, Like, I feel every challenge that a coach had given me, Throughout this game, every challenge I give myself, every challenge a teammate has given me, a reporter has given me, an opponent has given me, I've stepped up to that challenge. And, you know, just stepping up is part of it. Sometimes you don't, you don't, you know, succeed. And that's part of it to get your butt back out there, practice. How do I figure it out? And all of that, it's your job at the time, but it's fun, you know. But this is your job, but it's you fun. love it. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but you played with such joy. Yeah. That's why I enjoyed watching you so much yeah. every single week. And you practiced with joy. And you, you had joy in the locker room. And it's like, man, that is just – that's the way to do it. Yeah, I, I, I definitely – I played with a purpose. You know, um, at first it was – in high school it was to get a scholarship, uh, to get out of foster care. Then when I got to Syracuse, I got around some guys that were, you know – Hall of Fame, Marvin Harrison, uh, mm-hmm. Donovan, Mitt, like, and I was like, oh, so that's how you get to the NFL. And so I started working, 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 and I was on my journey. And then I get here, and I learned from the foundation that was set by, you know, those guys that I've been naming. And you know, then it's my turn, and you got to figure out how to do it. And that's why I say, um, you know, when it was my turn, <laughs> like they're like, here you go, Keith, and we're four and four and twelve and uh, <laughs> five and eleven. But you got to figure it out. You got to figure out how to be a leader on defense to, you know, help the offense, to, to help the team, to help the coaches, to help this whole thing get going. And you know, kind of reminds me of being the owner of a coffee shop. <laughs> 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 All right, I've got one more. Do you have another one or no? Okay, Keith Bullock. Who's the best player you ever played against? Mm. Best player. The best player I've ever played against is definitely. Uh, top, there's no order in that. There's no, but like off the top of my head is Peyton Manning. Really? You know, you got to think about it. Think about all the teams we had here. If the Colts didn't have Peyton Manning, how many times did we win the AFC, AFC South? How many times are we playing the New England Patriots, you know, for that division or for that, you know, um, you know, that title? And sure. And I, that's funny you asked that question. I thought about this the other day. You know, playing the AFC with Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, you know, and we competed. You know, mm-hmm. um, obviously we had some down years, but those are the years we didn't have a quarterback, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um yeah, it just uh, it just goes to show what you know the quarterback position does, and hey, I don't I don't feel no kind of way ab- about that. You know, um, that's how you know I can measure myself against you know some of the great players that play. Cause I, two times a year I'm facing Peyton Manning, and um, you know. I'm sure you had some luck against him. Yeah, no, nah, some luck, and I made. I a would couple not, pl- I mean, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, definitely some luck, and I made a couple plays. But yeah, Peyton did. Manning isn't gonna allow you to make plays against him. You know, he's you know, so um, that's why I'm saying like certain guys can keep you in your place, and he's one of those guys. And you got to have some luck against the sheriff. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, Peyton Manning's in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. He is, nice. and this Saturday night. Keith Bullock will be part of the group that joins him. Uh, we're just so proud. I, I mean, it, and this it. is going to be such a special night for everyone in the Titans family to see uh, one of our very favorites. And there's still 53 jerseys all around town and all around the region <laughs> because we love you. Keith Bullock, congratulations, and can't wait to see you Saturday night. Appreciate you all. For Keith Bullock and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for listening to the OTP.